All right, if you're watching this, please grab a King James Bible and turn to the book of Romans, uh, chapter 6, verse 23. Today is going to be part two of the video from lost to saved, step by step. So what I mean is a lost sinner on your way to hell to somebody who is saved by the grace of God and eternally kept by God on your way to heaven. So the Bible makes it very clear. And we went over the bad news in part one. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch that first. We use the scriptures to point out that the Bible says there's very bad news. Because we sinned, and sin is something that we unfortunately inherited because of Adam and Eve's sin. Sin entered into the world, and with it, death entered into the world. So because of sin, we will all die. Our flesh will at some point corrupt so much that it'll just give its last breath and we will die and our soul will go one of two places now if we have the good news and we accept that gift then it'll go up to heaven the bad news is because of our sins they're going to go to hell unless we accept that good news and have those sins washed away it's very unfortunate that millions upon millions upon millions maybe even more maybe billions upon billions of people have dropped down into hell simply because they didn't want to accept the good news. The good news is a phrase that is referring to the gospel. Now, the word gospel means good news or good tidings. So what we're going to do is go over today the good news, how we can accept a free gift of eternal salvation. And the Bible shows us, and we're going to break it down step by step and show you how easy it is to not go to hell. Like I said, because of your sins, you're going to go there no matter what, unless you accept this free gift, this good news. So let's start off in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. We read the first part of this verse the other day when we did uh, part one, but uh, we're going to read the whole verse right now because this is going to transition us from our sinful state into how we can get out of that sinful state and into God's arms, into heaven. So Romans 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So right there we see eternal life. That would be referring to heaven. Um, our soul going to heaven and at some point coming back down to this earth to reign with Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. And at some point God's going to even create a new heaven and a new earth. And you will eternally live there and pretty much anywhere you want to, the way it seems, including the new Jerusalem when that comes down. But that's another teaching for another time. We're not going to get into that right now. We're just going to, we're going to refer to it as eternal life with God in heaven. Okay. So how do we accept that free gift? How do we avoid hell? Well, what I want you guys to do is go to Ephesians chapter two and eat, uh, Verses 8 and 9, it really nails into your head that this is a free gift. There is nothing you can do besides accept this gift through faith. And that's exactly what this says. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. So God's grace saves you through faith. And that not of yourselves. This is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So God is making it very clear. Salvation is a gift from him to you. And you only have to do one thing, receive it by faith. Because believing in something, having faith in something is really the only thing that you can do that is not a work. Because you cannot boast about your faith. You cannot. You can't boast about what you believe. You can boast about how good of a person you are and all the good works you've done and the lack of sinning you've done in your life. But God won't accept that. He just sees that still as just unrighteousness in his eyes. This is a free gift. So that way you can go to heaven. You can be saved. Now let's see exactly what the Bible says, how to receive this gift. What do we have to put our faith in? And uh, before we go to the gospel, because remember I said the gospel means good news or good tidings. Let's see what Paul, the apostle, has to say in Romans chapter 2. Verse 16. In Romans 2, verse 16, 
It says, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So he's saying that men, that means all mankind, women included, so every human being, will be judged according to this gospel that is given to Paul. Now, what is this gospel? If we jump to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we'll see exactly what this gospel is. And we're going to make it very easy for you to understand how to be saved. So Romans chapter, uh, first Roman or first Corinthians rather, my bad, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And this is Paul again. This is his gospel that was revealed to him to give to us. Okay, so chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So right there he's saying, if you believe in this gospel, this good news, genuinely you are saved from hell and on your way to heaven, and there's nothing else that can stop that or prevent that. This is a once saved, always saved, if you believe in this gospel, okay? Let's continue. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Let's stop there real quick. It says, how that Christ died. How did Jesus die? He died on the cross by being crucified. So he was nailed to the cross and that is how he died. So he was basically sacrificed on the cross and he shed all of his blood right there for your sins, the Bible says. Okay. And then verse four, it says, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the Bible says the gospel is if you believe genuinely that Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed all of his blood for your sins and that he was buried and rose again, he resurrected the third day. If you believe that with all your heart, you're saved from hell, period. And there's nothing else added to that. Remember, the Bible makes it very clear. Works are not involved in salvation. Works are something that you want to do for Jesus after you are saved. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you will be judged for the works that you do for Jesus, but you will not be judged for your sins. You will not go to hell. You will go to heaven. But of course, that is not a free-for-all pass to go start sinning and living however you want to. If you're saved, you should really want to live a different life. Now, of course, you cannot base somebody's salvation on the way they live because the Bible makes it very clear there are backsliders. There are people who go back and live for the world. The Bible gives us many examples in the New Testament of this happening. It's a very unfortunate truth. God does not want that, though. He wants you to, after you get saved by faith alone, he wants you to go and do stuff for him to show him your dedication, your love, however way you may do that. That can even just be prayer on a daily basis and reading the Bible on a daily basis and showing him that you actually care about his word. But again, just because if you lack those things in your life, it does not mean that you're not saved. Okay, so from there, we're going to actually go to the book of Hebrews and we're going to start breaking this down and giving us more details on the specifics of what we're putting our faith in. Because right there it says how that Christ died and we see that Christ died by shedding his blood on the cross. And now the Bible, it makes a, it puts a very big emphasis on the blood of Jesus. So let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter nine and verse 22. And we see in Hebrews nine, verse 22, it says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. So remission would mean taking away. Okay. So, it's making it clear that blood is necessary for the purging of sins, okay? Getting away, getting those sins away from you, cleaned from you. But in the Old Testament, they had sin uh, atonements through sacrificing animals, but those 
animal sacrifices could only do so much. They could not save you eternally where you're once saved, always saved. There was still works that were involved and sacrifices that had to be done on a regular basis. Okay, so it was completely different. Once Jesus came into the world, his sacrifice was one and done. That one sacrifice is enough for all sins, past, present, and future. So it's making it clear that we have to believe that Christ died for our sins, and we have to put our faith in the blood of Jesus that he shed for us. And let's actually continue with that. Let's go back and see what Jesus had to say. This is before he actually was crucified in the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 28. Now the context here is Jesus is symbolizing his drink with his blood that he's about to shed for the world, which is going to start a dispensation change. So it's going to go from where works and the law had a prominent part in you being saved, for lack of better words, from hell, to none of that having anything to do with it. Now it's your faith in the blood that's being shed for you by Jesus. So let's see what he has to say. Matthew 26, verse 28, it says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. There's that word again, that remission of sins, that taking away of sins. So he's saying that once I shed this blood, this is exactly what he's hinting at. Once I shed this blood on the cross, you putting your faith in what I did and that blood on the cross that has been shed is what is going to take away your sins. He's making it very easy for us. And then he fully unloaded that gospel onto Paul and Paul broke it down for us step by step. So basically, again, in that gospel, putting your faith in what Christ did on the cross for your sins, shed all of his blood, and then he was buried and he rose again the third day. It's as easy as that. So let's actually, you know, from there, we're going to continue to speak about the blood of Jesus and how important it is. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Well, the Bible makes it very clear that the blood of Jesus is your atonement, the blood that was shed for your sins. And because he is God manifest in the flesh, that blood will actually work for all of your sins, past, present, and future. If he was a regular man, it would mean nothing. It might as well just be me shedding my blood for your sins, and that wouldn't mean anything wouldn't do anything for you. But because he's God, the son of God, aka God the son, that perfect blood is enough for all sin of every single human being. So Romans chapter 3, let's read verses 24 and 25. It says, being justified. Now that's a big word, justified. That means you're cleared of these charges. These, you're cleared of these sins. Being justified freely, remember there's that word free again because it's a gift, by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation. That word means he took the wrath of God upon himself for your sins. That way you don't have to pay for them in hell. It's a pretty fancy big word for saying he took your sins, now you are free and clear, as long as you put your faith in it. Let's continue. It says, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. There's that word remission again. Through the forbearance of God. So again, this right here makes it very clear. You're, you're putting your faith in that shed blood of Jesus that he did on the cross for your sins and that he was buried and because he's God he resurrected again the third day now that right there is the gospel you believe that you are saved it's as easy as that um, but we're going to go through a few more verses we're just going to really press the subject and make it easy for you like I said step by step and the only way to learn something is through repetitive repetitiveness and to Break it down using more than one source. And by, by more than one source, I mean more than one verse. Because the only source we're going to use is the Bible. Well, we're going to use multiple verses that prove the same point. You put your faith in the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross for your sins. 
and that he was buried and he rose again the third day, you're saved. Period. So let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, there's that word again, justified, you're cleared of those charges, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so that's that's pretty amazing, guys. You're justified by faith because of what Jesus did. It's really as easy as that. When you see people who are trying to add things to it, and then you have other denominations like the Catholic Church who... They, they uh, baptize babies and say they're part of the faith. No, they can't because they don't have an understanding of the gospel. And water baptism has absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. There was a transitional period from Christ's death and resurrection through the book of Acts that led to faith alone. And water, baptize, water baptism is not a part of your salvation anymore. It's only faith and faith alone. All right, so from there, let's go to the book of 1 John. Let's go a few different sets of verses in the book of 1 John, and then we'll call it a day because it's very easy to go over the good news. It's only confusing if you want it to be. So 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. So right there, if you have any questions about, well, okay, I know my past sins are cleaned. What about the ones I do in the future? What about the ones I'm doing right now? Or well, right here, it says the blood of Jesus cleans all sin, past, present, and future. Put your faith in the blood of Jesus that he shed for you. And now from there, let's go to 1 John chapter 2, just a few verses later. And verse 2, and it says, And he is the propitiation for our sins. There's that word propitiation again. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So everybody in the world, that blood is so powerful that it can clean Every sin you ever commit, and not just yours, but every single human being who steps foot on this earth until the day that Jesus Christ returns to rapture his church. Once the rapture happens, this gospel is no longer in effect. But right now, it is still in effect. If you believe this, you will go to heaven when you die, or you will go in the rapture when the rapture happens, whatever comes first. So that's great news. It's You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is believe in the blood of Jesus for your sins. And let's go over one more thing. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. So again, just a few chapters later. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. It says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So the last thing I'm going to leave with you guys is a question. Do you have the Son of God? It's very simple. The Bible makes it clear. You have the Son of God if you put your faith in what he did on the cross for you. He died for your sins by shedding his precious blood, his holy blood. And he was buried and he rose again. If you put your faith in that blood and that atonement for your sins, you are saved from eternal hellfire and you are on your way to heaven, and there is nothing that you nor anybody else can do to stop it. The Bible says once you are in God's hand, nobody can pluck you out of his hand, okay? So once you're saved, you're there eternally. So it's up to you. You can accept that great news. Because that's more than just good news. That's great news. That's the best news you'll ever hear in your life. Or you can stay into the bad news. You can reject Christ, and when you die, you will go to hell. Because that's the only sin that can't be washed away, the sin of rejecting the Son of God. If you reject what Jesus Christ did for you, if you reject that free gift, how much does that gift cost? Nothing. You, re you accept it by faith. So if you reject that free gift, then you're going to go to hell. It's your choice. All right, thanks, guys.